Dr. Rochelle Walensky is the director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Yeah, uh, director, thanks for joining us this morning. We, we have a number of issues that we want to get to, but first of all, wh why are you in Hawaii this morning? I'm happy to be with you. Thanks for having me. Um, I am here to, to, to visit with you, to visit with our Department of Health, your Department of Health, the Hawaii Department of Health, to meet with students at the School of Medicine, the University of Hawaii School of Medicine, um, and to really see how public health is working here in Hawaii. Well, one of the questions we did want to ask you is that it's been a big story here about the Red Hill water contamination and the thousands of families that got sick from that. And we know the CDC has a panel here looking at the military medical records. Is there anything that you can tell us that you have learned so far about this? Um, first, let me just say how hard this is and how we recognize the challenges associated with this and for the tens of th uh, thousands of people who potentially have been affected. We work in collaboration with the Department of Defense as well as the um, Hawaii Department of Health and came in invited to try and do this, to work to do this assessment of chemical exposure, which we did around the time of the initial exposure back in November. Um, we've published results from that. Those results have been published in May. And what they have generally showed is that people had increased rates of neurologic challenges, headaches, GI challenges, gastrointestinal challenges, skin. Um, and what we've been doing as we've been invited back is to continue those assessments. So we intend to make very publicly available the assessments that have been ongoing. And with invitation from DOD and the Department of Health, we continue to come back to see the long-term impact, potentially do some medical chart review to understand the long-term impact of that exposure. Could, could you give us an idea as to how many you've looked at, how many cases specifically and, and how many you're prepared to? I mean, we're talking hundreds and, and thousands of people that were affected. Um, but... Right, so our initial assessment was of thousands of people. Okay. Um, and so we'll, we're following up and those activities are ongoing now, but we're looking at large numbers. For the families who are involved, is it surprising that they're having such long-term impacts? Because I think initially that it wasn't what doctors expected. So again, those, those um, assessments are ongoing. What we had found initially is that um, early on, if you could remove that exposure, if you could stop drinking the water um, using you know, um, bottled water, for example, that those uh, clinical symptoms would go away. So those are the activities that we're doing right now to really understand what is the long-term impact and can we remove that exposure and see the, that impact resolve. You know, something that's affected so many people across the country. I mean, we're, we have a doctor shortage, uh, hospitals are full despite the fact that we're the other side of the pandemic. How have they dealt with that in other regions? And, and what can we do here in Hawaii to make sure that we're, we're fully equipped? Right, so one of the most important things I think that we can all do as a community right now is to take the preventive measures that we know work to protect ourselves. Because if we can stay out of the hospital, out of the clinical, because we don't need that those services, then that very much protects um, clinicians. So first, preventive measures like getting your COVID-19 vaccine, as well as all remaining up to date with all of your other vaccinations and, and all the other screening programs that we have available, that's really something the public can do. Second is to promote a healthcare workforce and a public health workforce. And that really is part of what I'm doing here in Hawaii, speaking to medical students, speaking to public health students, saying this is an incredible career. Um, we have so much that we can offer and it has really been um, an, incredible, an incredible time to be in the healthcare field. And then really finally for those clinicians and public health officers to take care of yourself. Um, we really do need um, that frontline workforce to be strong um, and to feel valued. And so we're really encouraging so many of those people to everybody to take care of themselves. We saw such a differing response from various states across the country during the pandemic. How do you think Hawaii did in its reaction to the COVID issue? So Hawaii is well known to have a really strong healthcare system, and that is something that we saw through and through through the pandemic as well. And we saw that Hawaii was able to get to over um, one of the top 15 states in the country in terms of vaccination rates of the primary series, doing also very well with regard to vaccination rates of the bivalent boost. So um, really has done quite well with regard to taking care of the people of Hawaii. Really um, great attention to um, Pacific Islanders and Hawaiian natives, um, vulnerable, more vulnerable communities that might not have had access. So I would say Hawaii should be, has a lot to be proud of. Yeah. Anything else we need to be aware of? Um, go ahead and to get, take care of yourself. Get those preventive measures that really do work, like your COVID-19 vaccine, bivalent boost vaccine, as well as all other vaccines. All right. Are you looking at any other possible infections in the future that, that would have a large-scale response like we had to see before with COVID? 
Um, so that is our job, is to, to <laughs> look and watch for anything that may arise. Um, certainly as the public health emergency winds down for COVID-19, and we anticipate that'll happen in early May, our work at CDC doesn't change. We continue full force into doing all of the things that are necessary in COVID-19, influenza, and any other public health threat that may be knocking at our doors. All right. Dr. Rochelle Walensky, head of the CDC, thank you for your time this morning. We Thanks appreciate so much it. for having me. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back.